In this video, we're going to explore two Excel functions, Goal Seek and Scenario Manager. Goal Seek can be used by students to find out what they need on their final test in order to get a certain grade. In this case, we're going to use Goal Seek to perform a break even analysis for our widget business. But before we get started, let's review some of Excel's formatting features. We've learned that we should always, when creating a spreadsheet that we're going to be sharing with other people, or perhaps not using for a while and we'll want to jog our own memory, always put a title into your spreadsheet. So let's begin by selecting a few rows, right-clicking and inserting. So we have some space here at the top. And let's make this area look kind of nice by coloring in the cells. We just need to have our paint bucket up here and let's choose a complementary color to what else we're using on the sheet. We can even insert a graphic in order to pull in our company logo. If we have a picture already on our computer, we can select it from there. We could draw our own shape or we could select an icon. In this case, let's just select an icon as our logo. It's going to bring us on line and we're selling widgets. We can move that around. We can insert a text box to put in our company name. And let's go ahead and make that a little bit larger with a nicer font. We'll move that over and let's change the color of our text. Okay, so that gave us some options here to make our worksheet look a little nicer. Now let's get down to business and look at how to do the break-even analysis. In the first section of our worksheet, we see our initial projections on what we think we're going to make in our next time period. These projection data come from forecasting past data. We know, however, that our selling price for the widgets are $35, and we expect to sell 120 in the next time period. That would mean our revenue, B10 times B11, is $4,200. Each widget costs us $25. That could be the widget plus packaging. It's a cost per unit. Our variable costs then are the cost per unit times the projected units that we're going to sell. So our variable costs are B11 times B13. Our fixed costs are things like rent, utilities, and payroll. We'll add those up and we see that they come to $2,542. So this cell will equal this cell. And our profit then is our revenue minus our variable cost minus our fixed cost. And we see that we don't have a profit right now. We actually have a loss. And this is where goal seek comes in. Our goal today is to find out where we're going to break even. No profit, but no loss either. So in the profit cell, we would want this change to a zero. We'll do this by having Excel help us answer what if. What if we change the selling price of the widgets? Or what if we change the number of units that we sell of the widgets? Is there any way that we could change the cost per unit? Maybe use cheaper packaging. How about changing the fixed cost? What if we could drop our utility bill or maybe we lay off some people and cut our payroll down? Now let's see how Excel does this using Goal Seek. 
Our first what if question is what if we change the selling price of the widgets? What would that price need to be to make the profit a zero? We'll start in cell B30 because this is where what we want set to zero. And on the data tab in the forecast group on the ribbon, we'll select what if analysis and goal seek. We're setting cell B30 to zero. That's what we want the value to be. And we want to change the selling price, which is B24. And now we select OK and Excel will do its job. And we see in order to break even, the selling price now has got to be $46.18 and we select OK. And now let's move on to what if we change the number of units sold. If for some reason we can't change the selling price or we think that our customers would never go for $46.18, well then how many units would we need to sell to break even? So we will select cell H30 on the data tab we select what if analysis goal seek we want to set the value to zero and we want to have Excel change the cell H24 to how many units would need to be sold select OK and we see that we would need to sell 254 units to break even. And now let's change the cost per unit and the fixed costs. We'll do that exactly the same way. Cost per unit. We would have to bring our cost per unit down to $13.82. So that's some serious packaging changes. And last, let's look at changing the fixed costs. To understand that error message, let's take a look at what it was saying. The error message said that it needed to have a value. When we select the fixed cost cell, we notice that the formula is used, not a value. So we need to change this to a number. We'll just go ahead and type in 2,542. And now let's see how Goal Seek works now. And we've got our break even analysis. And now let's look at the next what if analysis that Excel can assist us with. We're going to look at different scenarios for this widget company. Uh, let's first again do a little bit of formatting review. If we select styles, we can create a heading style or a title style. We'll leave it at title, uh, but maybe we want to bold it a little. Okay, now let's look at our data. This company sells five different widgets at different prices and a different number of units across the year. We want to find out first what the yearly total sales were. So we'll put in a formula where we're going to sum the number of units sold and then multiply by the unit price. So we'll begin by doing a sum and this time we're not going to use the auto sum, we're actually going to write it out when we start writing sum, we see that the helper comes up. It reminds us that we want to put in our left parentheses 
and now we can select the range that we want to sum. We need to close our parentheses and we want to multiply it by the price per unit. And now we'll fill down. Let's add on one more row where we see the total of all the units sold across all the widgets. Here we can use auto sum and fill across. Let's bold this row so that we know that it's not part of the initial data. And we'll turn this one into currency. And we see that the company had a pretty decent profit of $393,064. But what if we want to make that a half a million or even a million dollars? Let's see how we use the Scenario Manager to do that. We'll begin by selecting the Data tab. And in the Forecast group on the ribbon, we select What If Analysis, and Scenario Manager is our first selection. It pops up this wizard that has no scenarios defined. The very first scenario that we want to define is our current state of existence. We don't want to lose our current data. And if you don't do a current one, it would be really easy. So let's go ahead and add, and we'll make sure that we call this current state of data, or whatever will tell you that it's the current. And then we want to show what cells would we change if we had a new scenario. And let's say that in September, we have a fall push because we know people are starting to decorate for the holidays. And we're going to be very optimistic here. We don't really want to make any changes yet because we want this current snapshot. And we can go ahead and put a comment in. And now we'll select OK. And it says, if you were to change these cells, what would you change them to? Since this is our current one, we're just going to select OK. And now we've created our first scenario. Now let's say that we have um, oh, a mediocre contest where we haven't put a really big push on, but our salespeople do push this just a little bit. So we're going to add a new scenario called small push. Okay, so we've just given them a very small incentive to change these cells in September by maybe giving them a small commission. We select OK. And let's say that because we offered that small commission, we were able to change each of these by 100. So this would be 228, 308, 302, 279, and 230. And now select OK. And nothing's really changed yet. We've just created a scenario. So now let's do a new one for a large push. We're going to give them a pretty healthy commission if the cells in September were to change, so large commission. And we've given them a lot of incentive. So now instead of only increasing by 100, let's be really optimistic and do it by 200. So this becomes 328, 408, 402, 379, and last 330, and select OK. And now we can see what happens to our bottom line if we were to go with a small push. We'll select Small Push and select Show. And we see that we've gone up pretty significantly 
for only having a very small commission. If we compare our small pu push to our actual data, we see that we went up about $16,000. Not bad. Now let's see our current data compared to if we were to do a large push and offer a better commission. Wow, what a difference. So that's Scenario Manager and how you can do some comparisons. But make sure that you don't close out without going back to the current state of data.